So this is the latest uh, version 2 of the projector scanner, side projector scanner, and this one is made out of a totally different new projector. Uh, new electronics, uh, a lot of things are changed, so let's see if I can put this in here. So we have two diffusers, we got the lens right there, and then one diffuser, and then I don't know if it'll show up. There's another diffuser over there. And that just helps give very consistent lighting across, so there's no hot spot in the middle. And yeah, every single slide has to be rotated to be horizontal, like these, because there's no other way. Because I'm trying to fill the the full sensor frame on this camera. This is a Canon T3i. I think it's 22 megapixels, which is more than enough to do a 35 millimeter slide. And some of the changes on this one, I have a 3D printed hood and that just blocks all of the light that's going to bleed in through the sides. Helps a lot. The uh, two diffusers there. Electronics is way easier to understand now and modifying stuff. Uh, this one, the electron, uh, the uh, software, uh, I've extended the uh, the time between frames by a second. So now it's one and a half seconds and that gives me enough time to set the camera to be running in AV mode. <coughs> and what that does is it allows the camera to decide the shutter speed. So I'm shooting an aperture of f10 and that's that's enough to get the the slides focused enough for a, a range of slides. Like these these are the paper ones and you know, over here there's some some of the plastic ones. These are a lot better. Paper tray ones, it's stuck. And yeah, so this whole setup now takes, uh, well, a second longer every single slide, but it does autofocus or uh, automatic uh, shutter speed. So let's see here. So like this one, for instance, this one's one sixth. And I have the showing the the clipping so the the blue and the red so blue is black and then red is white and on the on the raw images like I, I this is not a problem at all but this gives me a good way to check to see how uh, like how if there is issues so let me see if I can Maybe this one might be a little too hot. No. This one is really white. Okay, yeah. So, um, the way I set this up, maybe I can see it over here. Um, yeah, so the exposure compensation, I'm going down two thirds. And this is to compensate for the black portion on the slide, because I'm I'm not clipping into the slide, but this is always going to be the blackest part of the image, and I don't want the camera to automatically adjust to try and uh, bring that into um, the right range and clip the like for instance the sky or any highlights. So I found that that value is a good value to bring it down. And another thing with uh, digitizing slides is like I'm not taking, I'm not trying to take the same, like the, the original photo with the same brightness and stuff that was in the image. I'm trying to capture all of the data that's in the slide and shooting it this way where it automatically adjusts like one tenth, there's one twentieth, one fifth. So like that, this image here is not how, let me turn off this stuff here. Like that's not how the image was originally taken, but this gives me all of the data or almost all the data that was in the slide. That way I'm not clipping any of the highlights or, or the blacks. So this works really well. And the only, the only downside with this is it does take the whole process takes a little longer. 
So in order to focus and align a slide up, what I do is go over here and go to single mode. And that'll load in one. And then I can go to the live view. And then in here I can do things such as autofocus, well, turn on focus, and then go back in here, hit autofocus. And that'll, that'll focus the slide. And I can get, go back to manual because manual is a lot faster. Autofocusing is too slow for trying to do it for every single individual slide. And this one, this one's lined up pretty good, so I'm not even going to adjust any of that stuff. But if I were to, I would, you know, I would be using this to rotate and, and raise the top, and then I can shift it to the side, and then I can also shift it forward along that uh, track there. So once I'm happy with that, I'll close this one, and because it's already it's already loaded, I'll just capture that one photo, and then there it is over there. And then to do the rest of them, I just gotta hit this button here. So this, this bunch might even get stuck because there's their well used slides, the trays on. You can see here how the, how the black there is being clipped, but the sky isn't being clipped there to compensate for that because it's two thirds down. This light here, this LED, this tells me I'm supposed to be taking an image. So in case the camera is not triggering the image or getting triggered from the projector, I can know there's a bug. All right, so it's done all those. So there's, there's a big range in shutter speed, so like 1 40th for that. This one, one fifteenth. So yeah, this definitely if you're doing this kind of stuff, you gotta shoot it in automatic shutter mode because it there's there's no way you're gonna be wanting to manually do it for this, especially if you're you're doing a large collection like mine. Uh, this new projector has gone through probably 12,000 slides uh, in a few days and I gotta redo the uh, the original V1 did 35,000 slides and I'm cur currently going through those ones and redoing those and I I'm not sure even how many I have left to do more than a hundred thousand uh, probably 150, maybe 200,000. So the camera might give out before then or the main mechanism that increments the slides in the projector, that will probably go because on the original V1, that one wore out. And yeah, so these go over here. I'll just with one hand put them in there. Um, yeah, when I'm shooting all this stuff, like here's a carousel, I have to take everything out and flip it over because otherwise everything's going to be mirrored. So that's kind of a pain, but it has to be done. These two big chunks of train track here, these just help the vibration. So right now there's like very little vibration. I don't know how much these things weigh, probably 10 pounds. 15 pounds each and yeah because of this uh, there is a motor in here that you hear spinning and that is 
Let's see if I can get the camera in here. Yeah, you might even be able to see that. So that's a pulley and it's driving worm gear. Let's drive in the rest of the assembly and nothing vibrates everything. And then there, there's a, where the transformer is, there's a, like an AC motor built into that thing. So yeah, definitely vibration has to be something to mitigate when you're doing this kind of stuff. The LED that's powering this whole thing is, uh, I'm not sure the, the brand, but it's a, I had to source it out. It has a very high CRI value um, of around uh, 95. And uh, yeah, it spits out a ton of light. I think around uh, 14 volts, I think around two amps. And uh, yeah, so like if you're, you're doing this stuff, definitely uh, finding a high quality LED. Like I wouldn't just use anything because that's gonna be all the light and it's to get good color representation. You really have to get that stuff sorted out. It comes this side. Yeah, so I got a fan and a little heat sink. Cooling the whole thing down. Another fan pointing towards the driver, power driver, and the transformer for the projector. Um, I think the original lights that these things, these projectors use is like a 400 watt incandescent bulb. So they uh, they get really hot. Uh, in this case, yeah, it's not even really it's not even warm at all. But the transformer that's in this thing still gets pretty hot. So you definitely still need to use uh, some sort of acting cooling, so the whole thing doesn't uh, cause too many problems. I'll run through another little batch here and see if. Anything gets stuck. So I go back over here, reset this. And they're getting loaded in. See if I can do this one one hand. This one with a lot of black clipping. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the version two of this whole thing. Uh, so far, so good. And uh, I just have to get through this collection and then probably find a new home for this thing. Alright, that's all for this video. See you next time.